Superheroes! A team of friends and animals working together! Splash the Penguin! Patience the Sloth! The Pollinator a Bee! Karma Chameleon! Frog the Croaker! With Robin! Hola amigos! Patience the Sloth here! Just hanging out on Robin's back porch! This rainy weather reminds me of another place I really love. The rainforests of Central and South America. That's where wild sloths can be found in the world. They love it there. Sloths mainly eat leaves off trees, so the high branches of the rainforest are the perfect place for them to live. Plus, it provides great shelter and protection from predators. Sloths move so slowly, green algae tends to grow on their backs. It's not unusual to see a green sloth, and that makes for great camouflage when they want to keep safe. Think about the place that you live. What makes it a good home? Today, we are going to learn all about habitats, or the places we live. What makes a good habitat? Animal of the Day. Today's Animal of the Day comes from this kind of habitat, an African savanna. Lots of people think of giraffes, elephants, or zebras when they think of the savanna, but today's animal is much smaller. This cute savanna critter is called a dwarf mongoose. They only weigh about a pound, which is about the same as a loaf of bread. In the wild, dwarf mongooses use termite mounds as shelter and lookouts for predators. These are some of the dwarf mongooses that live at the St. Louis Zoo. Their zoo habitat has plenty of tunnels and places to burrow and look for insects for food, just like in the wild. Dwarf mongooses live in big family groups of up to 30 animals. They go foraging or looking for food together during the daytime. Mongooses mostly eat insects, and the zookeepers have put some insects inside this box for the mongooses to hunt. That way they can explore and work together just like they would out in the wild. Wild Cave Kingdom Here we see two leafcutter ants out harvesting leaves to bring back to the colony. They'll follow the scent trails to go back and grow delicious fungus. Snail mail! It's mail time with Aunt Stephanie. I wonder what she saw on her travels this week. Dear Robin, hello from Costa Rica. Today, our birding group came upon the most incredible sighting, a pair of resplendent quetzals, pictured as the male. Our guide called them treasure birds. We spent two hours watching them as they investigated the area for good nesting sites. Now is the season for pairs to locate the perfect nest and get it all cleaned up. We listened as the pair called back and forth to each other, deciding which nest was best. Love, Aunt Stephanie. Sarah, sing along! Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to be learning a song all about animals and the habitats they live in to the tune of Old MacDonald Had a Farm. So our very first animal is a monkey and monkeys love to live in the rainforest up in trees, so... In the rainforest lives a monkey, E-I-E-I-O And that monkey loves to swing, E-I-E-I-O With a swing swing here and a swing swing there Here a swing, there a swing, everywhere they swing swing Monkeys love to swing in trees, E-I-E-I-O in a hive lives a honeybee, E-I-E-I-O. 
And that honeybee loves to buzz, E-I-E-I-O. With a buzz buzz here and a buzz buzz there, here a buzz, there a buzz, everywhere a buzz buzz, buzzing honeybees live in hives, E-I-E-I-O. In the ocean lives a sea lion, E-I-E-I-O. And that sea lion loves to swim, E-I-E-I-O. With a swim swim here and a swim swim there, here a swim, there a swim, everywhere they swim swim. California sea lions live in the ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Thank you so much for singing with me. I have loved singing all these songs with you and I cannot wait to sing more. Bye guys! Wow, I love that song. Hmm, I wonder if I can make a song about myself and the habitats I live in. In Madagascar lives chameleons, E-I-E-I-O. And those chameleons love to climb, E-I-E-I-O. That has a lovely sound to it because most chameleons like me do live in Madagascar and we live high up in trees. We have an amazing adaptation which helps us to hold on to trees. Any guesses to what it might be? It is our toes! Chameleons have grouped toes, meaning two of our toes are together on the outside and three are together on the inside. Pretty cool, right? I am curious to find out what our next animal is and where they live. Bitty, bitty book. In today's I Spy Challenge, we will be looking at a whole habitat. This habitat is a pond. Turtles, ducks, geese, frogs, fish, deer, and many other animals live at this pond. And all of these animals need food, water, shelter, and space to survive. Can you point out where some of these animals might find their food, water, shelter, or a space to live? Pause the video here if needed. Animals can find food by eating things like wild strawberries in the grass surrounding the pond. Some hunt for their food in the pond. Not all animals use the water to drink or to live in. Some use it to stay clean or to practice getting food. Some animals need a shelter in a hole in the ground or in a tree, and some just need protection from flying predators above. Can you think of more ways animals can use a habitat like a pond to survive and stay safe? Yoga. 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 We've been talking now about the homes animals live in. Now we're going to practice some gratitude about our own homes. Gratitude just means being thankful for something. So think about your home and what's inside or around it and think about what you're thankful for. Try to think of five things that you're grateful for. If you can't think of five, that's okay. Try to think of at least three things. For each of the five things, you can say, I am grateful for, along with me, and then say what you're grateful for, out loud or just in your head. Here we go. I am grateful for. 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 Awesome job. Hmm, I wonder who's calling. It says unknown caller. Let's find out. Where could this call be coming from? 
hear some rain and thunder, frogs, birds and insects. I think I even hear some monkeys calling. Ah, it's the sounds of a rainforest. Rainforest habitats can be found all over the world, even in the United States. These very wet forests are home to more than half of the kinds of plants and animals on the whole earth. Thousands of kinds of insects live in the rainforest. And all that rain makes a great environment for amphibians like this red-eyed tree frog. There are lots of rainforest animals you can see at the St. Louis Zoo, like macaws and our family of orangutans. This summer, your family can help rainforests by choosing ice cream that uses sustainable palm oil. Palm oil is in lots of ice creams, and we want to make sure that it's grown in a way that doesn't hurt the rainforests. You can show your grown-ups this list. Your family can learn more about palm oil and how to help the rainforests at the St. Louis Zoo website. Animal Actions when the temperatures get hot in St. Louis, our zoo animals have lots of ways to cool off in their habitats. Our polar bear, Cully, loves to go for a swim in his pool. And all our friends at Penguin Puffin Coast have icy cold air conditioning and great pools as well. Huck and Finley, our grizzly bears, love to swim and bounce. But not all animals like to swim. Some animals cool off in other ways. Birds of prey, like this bald eagle, will often spread their wings out to let the air blow through them to cool off. Let's be a bald eagle. Spread your wings, let the air go through. Keeping the wings away from the body helps them stay cool as well. Crocodilians have a different challenge. They're trying to warm their bodies, but their brains can overheat. That's right, they have to gape with their mouths wide open in order to keep their brains cool enough to stay healthy. Let's try and be a crocodile. Open your mouth really wide. Oh, nope, not swim, find another spot. Ready? <gasps> open it really wide <gasps> and cool. Very good. Desert animals have lots of ways to keep cool. One of my favorites are lizards. They actually do dances in the sand because it's so hot. If you've walked across hot sand or concrete, you know what it feels like. So they will take turns lifting one arm, one leg, another leg, another arm, two arms, two legs, two arms, two, and even lay on their bellies to keep cool. It's pretty silly, but not as silly as what these guys do. These storks and other storks and vultures actually urinate or pee on their own legs to stay cool. Let's pretend. Okay, just we're just pretending. Okay, we're gonna try it one more time all together. We're gonna spread our wings like an eagle, gape our mouths wide open like a crocodile, dance on the sand like a lizard, and pee on our legs like a stork. A scientist uses a microscope to look at things up close. Can you guess what I'm looking at under my microscope? What do you see? I see some lines. I see what looks like dirt. And I see different colors. What do you think this could be? It was the end of this broken stick. Ask an expert. 
my favorite it's a fact about cheetahs is that they go super fast and they can avoid and beat anything. Out and about. Hello everyone, you are with me here in Forest Park. If you can see behind me, this is called a wetland. So in wetlands, it is home to many different types of animals, different plants. There are a few things that I have found going around our wetland area. I have seen some red-winged blackbirds, I've seen some cypress swamp trees, and I've even seen cattails. So if you wanna come and look what is behind me, we actually have a cattail. Cattails grow down by the water, and when they're ready to spread their seeds, they have this puffy fluff that flies off like snow. The wetlands are also home to many interesting birds, like this great egret, who you might find in the water or up in a tree, or this green heron. Both of these birds use the water to look for things to eat, like fish or other small animals. You might even see some reptiles and amphibians, like this turtle out sunning itself on a log, or this frog who's trying to camouflage just below the surface of the water. Wetlands are super important to the environment, and I'm so thankful that here at Forest Park, we not only have wetlands here, but we also have many different habitats we can explore. Citizen Science. Do you like looking for wildlife in your backyard? Like this ladybug? Or looking for the flowers that are ready to bloom? Well, if you do, and you'd like to help scientists learn about the world around us, you might want to join Nature's Notebook. It's a citizen science project that you can help with in your own yard. You and your family will watch to see what happens during the seasons to plants and animals all around, like this flower ready to bloom, or when the first leaf falls off a tree in the fall. You download an app called Nature's Notebook, and then you pick a campaign to join. There are all different campaigns that you can join to help scientists. You can look to see when leaves turn green in the spring and different colors in the fall. Or look for pests in your yard that might be eating your plants. That can help scientists help farmers with pests on their crops. You can also watch to see when things flower in the spring. We chose Nectar Connectors as our project. For this project, you track different types of flowers and see when they're blooming. This will help scientists know what kind of food our nectar-loving pollinator friends, like monarchs and bees, have to eat at different stages of the spring and summer. Milkweed is one of monarchs' favorite foods. You can see here the green is not quite ready to flower, but soon enough, it's going to turn bright orange and open up and there'll be wonderful butterfly weed with yummy nectar for monarchs and other pollinators to enjoy. I noticed this black-eyed Susan was the first to start to open. And then I saw our bee balm. It's in the mint family. You can tell because it has a square stem. It looks very beautiful with purple and green, but it's not quite blooming yet. Look at how tall the Joe Pie weed has gotten. Robin couldn't believe he could reach it from way up there. And there were things at the top of the stems. Was it flowering yet? What do you think? Not quite. Robin decided for his first observation to check out another kind of milkweed. This is swamp milkweed. 
but it can grow in places that aren't swamps. And it's another favorite of butterflies and other pollinators. Robin noticed there were some insects on the plants. He wondered what they were. That's one of the fun things about Nature's Notebook. When you're out making your observations about what plants are blooming, you can discover all kinds of amazing wildlife. Those tiny insects were aphids, and aphids suck the sap out of plants. But ladybugs eat aphids for dinner. So the circle of life continues in Robin's garden. And he gets to watch, which is pretty cool. Also, all of the things he's watching are going to help scientists learn more about the world around us. Whoa, that was awesome. I loved learning about all the different habitats that animals can live in. Each one was so unique and special. What do you love about the place that you live in? Adios, amigos.